Thank you for choosing Nerd Call as your media source for everything nerdy. Please be sure to stay in your seats until the video has come to a complete stop. Your exits are found at the top right of your browser or Command Q for those that don't have time to move the mouse. Please be sure to share with your friends and subscribe for future videos. Alright, I don't know how to get started, so I'll just get in there. Let me summarize my Star Wars nerd history. I grew up with the original trilogy, saw the prequels in theaters, collected the cards, played dozens of Star Wars video games, including the arena board game. My first painting in my art career was of Anakin Skywalker, collected a variety of toys, and read any book in the public library that had the Star Wars logo. I am witnessing the new movement of the Star Wars franchise and the direction it's been tailored to. We need to talk. Star Wars is creatively bankrupt! I have heard this being said by critics and fans alike, and after a lot of thought, I can agree and disagree. There are many artists that can see Star Wars as a vessel for creativity and do amazing things to expand the possibilities. However, there are more mainstream artists that are seeming to strip Star Wars of the creative freedom by narrowing the canon with cinematic blunders and gaming catastrophes. <laughs> Disney! <laughs> EA! <coughs> oh, sorry, nasty cough. Abrams did a praiseworthy job of boosting Star Wars into the modern age and dusting off the franchise from the prequels. That being said, Abrams played it perhaps too safe by constricting the new story to fan service and familiarity. I don't blame Abrams since he had a monumental task of bringing Star Wars to a myriad of fans, old and new. I give him and The Force Awakens. Rogue One did the opposite, where it found creative storytelling by staying in the confines of the original trilogy. It wasn't a necessary addition, but it was welcomed. Ryan Johnson and The Last Jedi was a fan-made movie with the resources of a cinema empire. I was so baffled at how they gave one man such freedom with an influential giant. Johnson clearly scrapped the Abrams storyline and decided to tell his own story without being told what to do. I won't dissect The Last Jedi in this video, but I will summarize it with saying the movie wasn't Star Wars. It was just a standard blockbuster sci-fi flick. I don't blame Johnson entirely since he was just the kid whose parents left alone with a bucket of paint and an antique piano. The future films that Disney has planned are clearly cash grabs since they have witnessed how fans of all ages will undoubtedly throw money in their face. Star Wars began as an inspired cinematic space chronicle but is currently translated into a strict business. This is where I feel pity for Lucas, who didn't ask for Star Wars to become so widely idolized and was forced to milk a dead cow. His poor creative choices came from public pressure and financial allure. Star Wars was destined to be made into video games. So many games have captured the spirit and excitement of our Star Wars dreams. But even the big wigs found the cash cow of Star Wars games and began to milk gamers with the trending microtransactions, season passes, and downloadable content. Greed always finds a way when popularity swarms a franchise. It's obviously not that black and white, but you get the idea. Am I making any sense? What are your thoughts and feelings on the topics presented? Please feel free to continue this conversation and share your passion for Star Wars in the comment section below.